everyone. Welcome back to uh, H Capital with me, Balkis, and our guest today. Uh, this is Mona Mana. She is the CEO of Place Borneo. How are you today? Hi, Akis. Good, thanks. Um, okay. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what do you do? Um, we are a professional conference organizer, mm -hmm. uh, and our second core business is actually music festivals. Mm -hmm. Uh, but our main business is organizing conferences. We bid for international conferences to be uh, to come into Sarawak. So Mona, when we discuss about our workforce nowadays, it is very age diverse. So, but maybe we could talk about the different generations that we have currently. So I think the first one is traditionalists. Uh, I don't think uh, they are in the workforce anymore. So traditionalists is probably bef uh, the ones who are born before 1945. Yeah, so they're about 76. Or so right now, I think in terms of workforce, uh, I don't think they are in the workforce. So we have about four generations left. Yep. Um, the next one would be baby boomers. Baby boomers. Yeah. So those are 1946 to 64. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have the Gen X, which is um, 1965 to 1980s, mm -hmm. um, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then, or oh, 1979. And then Gen X, mm -hmm. uh, Gen Y, sorry. Yeah. Uh, millennials. millennials yes, that's us. us. So that's 1980 mm -hmm. to 1995. Yes. But some go up to 2000 even, mm -hmm. um, to consider them millennials. And then um, after that, or after 1996 um, onwards, would be the Gen Z, Zillennials. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the differences, like the, the main differences amongst uh, different generations? Um, I think the major ones would be the technology that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. So the Gen X and the baby boomers, they grew up with no emails mm -hmm. uh, or maybe just towards later on in life. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have handphones. They had to carry, you know, that, that yeah. big box of phone. <laughs> yeah. um, and for us, we grew up with the internet. Yeah, um, with social there. media, yeah. with games, sure. and that's why the Gen uh, Z or Zillennials, they're also called globals or gamers, mm -hmm. uh, because that's how they grow up. So you have gamification yeah. right now in everything you do. So I think like that kind of leads to the way we prefer communications. Like for example, like Millennials and Gen Z, yes. uh, we are reluctant to talk face to face or on the phone, we prefer text, I am. Yes. But I think Gen Zs, they are more open to social media. So for us, it, we, we like emails and text and uh, exactly IMs, yeah yep. but all the generations they they prefer face to face they like that value yes a bit more yeah so that's why they don't like zoom and when we're comfortable with zoom mm. we're like can we just zoom they're like no can we meet at you know <laughs> yeah. so, no it's covid now you know yeah, so yeah yeah so that's, that's a great the example main difference but i would like to kind of discuss about okay baby boomers like the characteristic they are called um, loyal they have um, they like teamwork and mm -hmm. they're very dutiful so i think the baby boomers are known to be very loyal. They just do wha mm -hmm. you know, what they're supposed to do. Gen X are, I can kind of say they are the forgotten ones because mm -hmm. they are like, it's very short, the gap yep. uh, for the Gen X. Um, they are very flexible. They are independent, um, slightly skeptical. So for us millennials, we are very competitive. Mm. Quite open-minded, mm, mm, I would say, I maybe. Guess. Uh, achievement oriented. I yes. would kind of agree. We are yep. quite, um, we like to compete. Yes, that's right. So, and then there's uh, Gen Z, uh, like you said, global, entrepreneurial, uh, progressive, less focused. Mm -hmm. Right? So, when we discuss about um, the, uh, the workforce and uh, um, the mixture of all these generations, maybe we can talk about the benefits first. What do you think are the benefits? I think um, in a workforce, if you have uh, a lot of different types of people, I would say just not not just the age, mm -hmm. also race, religion, background, anything. I think there are benefits to that. Mm -hmm. um, and with age, when you have an age diverse workforce, you get all these benefits because you get a multitude of ideas. Yeah. So you've got the baby boomers and the Gen X who grew up in a different era. Mm -hmm. So their perspective in life, um, their lens in life is different mm -hmm. from the Gen Z and Gen Y, yeah. our millennials. Uh, and so you've got this range of ideas from one extreme to the other extreme and you've got the you know the younger ones who are more idealistic you know yeah. they want like new ideas they're more technology savvy yeah. so their ideas are more maybe more towards technology and you've got the older generation a bit more you know um, yeah. subdued you're a bit structured, grounded maybe? structured yeah. and they don't want to be too you know like um, risky in terms yeah. of ideas so you can actually merge these two ideas yeah. you've got the best you know True. and and that's one of the benefits that you yeah. get and because of this, your company can become more competitive because yeah. you get a better solution to your problems. Um, and also your marketing ideas can be better because then you can cater to 
the growing market right now is actually millennials. Yeah. We're going to be about 50% um, of the workforce and that's 50% that's right. of the market as well. Yeah. And the zillennials are they coming up. So you need to have their input for you to actually reach out to your customers. Yeah. They are your customers as well, your internal customers. But for your external customers, you need to understand. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think the benefit is you get yeah. um, both worlds. Yeah. And I think let's also not forget the mentorship, like the relationship between yes. the older generations and the younger ones. I think the younger ones would still love, uh, the, uh, you know, a bit of mentorship there. Um, uh, we don't want to, when we deal with the same generation, uh, nobody can kind of give this, uh, we need a bit of structure, we can't really follow our way. So I think that diverse um, atmosphere would kind of affect that too. Yeah, so a lot of the knowledge are right now still in the baby boomers yeah. and the Gen X. Yeah. Um, in fact, they say a lot of it is actually still in the baby boomers mm -hmm. brains, you know, yeah. minds. And so you need to have a knowledge transfer yeah. um, and you need to have uh, you need to have a strategy for that and you need to yeah. give it time. So if you suddenly let go of all your baby boomers or Gen X, then this new generation will be, you know, floundering, trying yeah. to figure out how do we do this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's so you're yeah, right. That's true. All right, the heart, uh, the heart <laughs> of this interview, the challenges of having multi-generational workforce. Um, I think you mentioned it before, communication. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the, the biggest challenge. I think it's not just uh, with different ages, different culture, different yeah. religion, mm. different race. So you've got uh, communication breakdown is the biggest problem in any organization. And yeah. with the different ages, it's the method of communication. Yeah. So we've got the younger ones who are more comfortable maybe chatting on, on WhatsApp. So we've got um, management by WhatsApp, they call it. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the older generation who prefer to have a face-to-face -face meeting yeah. you know they want to call for a meeting even for a very simple thing so that's um, I think those that's one of the challenges that we can identify true that's true so I think it also comes down to um, negative stereotypes. that's one of the challenges uh, negative stereotypes a lot of the older generations they would see like Millennials and the Gen Z's are entitled mm. um, lazy probably <laughs> not up to their standards yeah so I think that's one of the things that um, it, uh, it annoys them. Mm -hmm. But for the younger generations, we feel that the older ones are less likely to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. They're very inflexible. So I think that's one of the challenges that we have to face. But whether it's a stereotype or it's just a breakdown in communication, that, that yep. could be it. You exactly. Know? And I think uh, benefits, um, I think when we deal with different ages, the, the things that they want from a company is very different. Yeah, so yeah. They, there's different ways of motivating them and yeah. that's where your benefits and challenges also come into play yeah. because you have to deal with them differently. Yeah. So you've got different ways of leadership for yeah. different generations because it's, uh, it's called situational yeah. leadership depending on where they are in their career true. and that's how you actually guide them. So if they're more experienced like the baby boomers or Gen X, um, so you don't have to just, you, you don't have to keep breathing down their necks, you true. know, all the time. Yeah. Just tell them, okay, this is how I want it done, get it done. Yeah. But the new ones, you have to coach them, you have to guide them step by step. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So, um, um, we'll discuss more about the multi-generational workforce, um, so we'll be right back after this. Hey everyone, welcome back to H Capital. So we are discussing about the generational um, workforce and the com uh, challenges that we have. So just now we were talking about the motivation. Uh, like, um, so for example, like every company, they do have benefits for their employees, right? Mm -hmm. But we do have a standard, standardized um, benefit. So it's not um, separated between, uh, it's not different for, for each generation. So, but we kind of have to know what motivates our employees. Yeah, I think uh, basically a lot of people are motivated by about the same thing. I think money is a moti motivation mm -hmm. and people who say money is not mo motivation, I think that's kind of, it's lying. a big lie. Yeah. <laughs> You're you know, lying. Money is the biggest motivation, but I think to some degree, it is different with the generation. Yeah. So some generations are more motivated by money and some are not. Yeah. Um, so I like to, this is going to get a bit academic, mm -hmm. um, but if you know the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. right? So at the bottom of the pyramid, you have the, uh, basic needs. Okay. Um, so those are like security um, needs, um, the need for food, the need yeah. for a shelter, yeah. um, the need to be able to have uh, you know clean air and so. Um, and 
and then you have the physiological needs mm -hmm. um, and so no psychological needs so those are esteem needs yeah. um, a sense of belonging or love and at the top you have this um, self-fulfillment uh, and this is more like your passion you know yeah. what actually drives you and so I like to think of it and and this is what I notice in some of the generations the older ones, like baby boomers and Gen X, they are more uh, motivated by the lower levels of the pyramid. So because when they grew up, uh, some of them did not have enough food on the table. Yeah. You know, I remember my dad would, would say that you know, when he has 11 siblings, yeah. and then when they were eating, they would be given a portion of rice and yeah. one piece of meat. I think they're just one. trying to survive. Yeah. They were trying to survive. And then sometimes they eat rice and with anchovies, it can mm -hmm. be least. And they say that time it was the most you know, expensive thing. Yeah. But right now it's like, you know, everywhere. Yeah, sure, yeah. And so for them, um, achieving the bottom ranks of the pyramid is motivation enough. Yeah. Um, although, of course, once they get that, they want to go into self-fulfillment, um, yeah. you know, like passion and all that. But the younger generation, um, millennials mm -hmm. and also Gen Z, we've got that ready already. You know, we've got the house. Your parents are already provided you with a house. Yeah. You're pretty all right in life. Mm -hmm. And so they sort of jump right to the self-fulfillment. We want more. And yeah. that's why the younger generation, they want to follow their heart. Yeah. You know, they want to be passionate about things. True. And so that's how we should actually motivate our employees True. in terms of what actually drives them. Yeah. So you see, some of um, the younger generation they always look at Google offices mm -hmm. you know with the ping pong tables with the cafe with the bean bags and all that so to them that is an aspiration that you know I work in an organization that respects me that provides me with this nice place mm -hmm. and so it's more of um, that's why people say they're entitled yeah. you know but it's just a sense of feeling uh, a belong, sense of belonging belong, yeah. um, and also because they think Google is a, a big company that does a lot of good things True. you know so that is part of contributing back yeah. to the community and you see the Millennials and also more of the Gen Z they're more passionate about the environment about mm. animals That's true. you know so if your company can see that they are passionate about that maybe then your reward to them would be giving them a CSR activity to do you yeah. know uh, to lead a CSR activity yeah. and they'll feel so great yeah. you know they can Instagram about it hey I'm helping yeah. the orangutans so uh, the you know. Gen Z's are more like advocates they, they are activists yes they, they they care about the society, you know, uh, things like that. I think the older g generations don't really worry so much about. Yeah, well, people say, you know, we are now where we are because of the baby boomers. Sure. They destroyed our ozone layers <laughs> and stuff. Um, but, uh, well, n not exactly that, yeah. but that's um, what's happening. And so the younger generations see it as their um, responsibility True. to actually fight for the animals, yeah. the wildlife. So um, the companies should know who. Uh, who is majority in their their company and kind of build their benefit or uh, the the whatever they recommend like based on who is working with yeah them, right? talk to them and yeah. ask them you know what drives you yeah what you do know you what do you want yeah. you know like is it you know just money and mm -hmm. okay I'll give you money you know <laughs> but um, do you want to work with wildlife for example yeah. okay we'll organize uh, mm -hmm. in a program with the orangutans for example yeah. and then they'll feel so good. And, and one more thing, I, uh, I think you mentioned about them being entitled. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things with the younger generation, they're more, because they're more on social media, right? So a lot of things must look good. You know, it yeah. must be Insta worthy. Yeah. So when you do something, you need to make it, that's why they like good, uh, nice offices, yeah. take picture of their coffee, you know, yeah. coffee on Monday morning, yeah. for example. So you need to make it uh, all, um, uh, it, it's cool to be part of it so yeah. when they post on social media you're like oh you're so cool you're yeah. involved with orangutans it, it, that kind of helps the company in a, in a way because that's employer branding yep. uh, right there so exactly unconsciously they are helping uh, you to build your your brand yes right? and yeah. they want to be part of a strong brand True. Uh, so uh, that appeals that it's a win-win situation True. okay so I have a statement for you you can agree or disagree mm -hmm. uh, younger workers perform better than older ones do you agree or disagree disagree because? Yeah, well, because I think there's a lot of factors. This is a multi-factor equation. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the age. You've got your education. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your background, how you grew up. Um, you've got personality. So there are different 
personalities for different jobs. Sure. Uh, so there are jobs that actually run a personality test. I remember when I first started working in a bank, they actually run you through a personality test to see if you are actually suitable for that role. Mm. And and so it's not just age. And I've seen you know older generation who's you know supposedly more experienced, yeah. but not necessarily better. Mm. Yeah. I think like um, f the ability to process does decline with age. But I, I don't think it's that severe, you know, because I think with um, the older generation, it comes with wisdom, it comes with experience. So I think younger generations, not necessarily they are better that, at that. I might be, if it comes to technology, yes. Yeah. But in terms of knowledge-wise, I don't think um, exactly. that's true. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of things. And in fact, it doesn't decline with age. Yeah. Um, actually, brain function improves with age. True. But you need to exercise, exercise it. It's like yeah. your muscles as well. Yeah. But I guess maybe a lot of us are lazy. You know, <laughs> when we get old, we just want to sit around with our cats. That's and true. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, so second statement. Uh, by declining to retire, older employees are taking jobs for a younger one. Agree or disagree? I disagree mm -hmm. because I think you still need the older generation. Like I said, there must be a knowledge transfer and a lot of this knowledge and experience is still actually with the baby boomers and Gen X. So if they or most of them suddenly retire, then you're going to have a skills gap. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be tough for you to fill that up, you know, because then the newer generation like us, we're a bit more inexperienced. Yeah. We're very idealistic, yeah. um, but we don't know what we're getting ourselves into most True. of the time. So we need um, these older generation to tell you, um, to no, no, yeah. um, wait, wait, maybe we should do it this way, yeah. that way, you know. So Pull your horses. Yeah. Not too fast. <laughs> well, I, think, um, I think the economists, they call it a lump of flavor fallacy. So it, um, there is an idea out there that um, it's a pie, you know, this, there's a fixed amount of job, number of jobs mm -hmm. for everyone. So if you don't kick out the uh, older ones, the mm -hmm. young ones can't come in. So I think that's where the idea comes from. But I think it has been proven um, not true. Um, people tend to forget that if you have more jobs, it means your productivity increases. Mm -hmm. It means, uh, you know, your company, the economy increases, it booms. So I think people tend to forget the bigger picture. They're only looking at the dynamic of their workforce. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the issue now. That's yep. why a lot of people agree to it because you can only see within your circle. You yep. can't see in terms of economy. So I think we have to kind of start changing that mindset. Yep. Yeah. So the most annoying stereotypes that you have, my own generation. So we are the yeah. millennials, yeah. Uh, Gen Y. Mm -hmm. We're always taught to be more technology savvy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, let, let her do it. She knows how to run, <laughs> you know, social media. Yeah. So not necessarily. I yeah. have friends who are useless with social media or yeah. with technology. That's and me. <laughs> that's me. <I'm laughs> you, for example, yeah. uh, Exhibit A. <laughs> uh, and so I think that's uh, an annoying, um, I think, stereotype. Assumption, yeah. yeah, assumption that oh, just let them do it. They know yeah. how to do it. So I think you need to be careful, especially. True when companies they feel like oh we have a Facebook page or let the Millennials run the Facebook page yeah. not necessarily they know what to do you need True. to study it a bit yeah. you know yeah um, Millennials are lazy I <laughs> think for me it's not annoying somewhat the perception is different I think they don't understand like Millennials they don't probably need eight hours mm. uh, they can do their work from home they can do their work uh, coffee shop through phone through email so they don't really understand why do we need to stay there uh, but you know your mind is not there so yep. that doesn't help also yep. and then there's um, the assumption that millennials are not loyal mm -hmm. uh, because we job hop a lot yep. do you think we job hop a lot? I think we do. Yeah. Um, not. Uh, it depends. I. I. Yeah. I don't. Uh, not that much. But yeah. I know friends who actually do yeah. that a lot. I think it's also because again, it goes back to uh, goes back to the motivation True. because they're not finding what um, serves you. them. Yeah, fulfills yeah. their needs. You know, so they find other True. places. Yeah. And um, it's true, baby boomers in those days, jobs are more scarce. Yeah. So then they couldn't job hop. They yeah. wanted to maybe, even in their younger days, but they couldn't. Um, so I think it's not a generational thing. It's more of the opportunities that we have True. right now. Yeah. And I think like when it comes to um, the current situation, the rate of pay um, is growing slower compared to the cost of living. Yeah. So whenever they see another company that offers a higher uh, package, yep. they will kind of jump and grab it. Because at the end of the day, it's not about money. Uh, but if it's a combination of money and benefits, yep. you know, and lifestyle fulfillment, what they are passionate about, I think definitely we jump a lot.
But I think there's also this misconception that it, it only happens to our generation. Uh, I think it's just young 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 kids yeah you know i'm pretty sure the older ones baby boomers exactly when young, yeah they when were, they were young yeah. they were also hot-blooded you know wanting yeah. to do everything in life yeah. you know you that's what we are think about your your mortgage or you, you don't think yep. about it because you don't have a lot of the that's, responsibilities yep. that you know as you grow older you kind of tone down a bit okay maybe i should think <laughs> yep. about the responsibilities <laughs> yep. that i have okay so if you have to um uh, what what should our leaders uh, no, the takeaway message to our leaders: What should they know about uh, generational uh, gap? Um, what can they improve, and how can they change? Mm. I think um, one of the the myth I would say about one generation is, for example, like baby boomers and Gen X, because they are more experienced, uh, they're, they're older, they've mm -hmm. worked longer. So the, the misconception is they are better suited to higher positions mm -hmm. or leadership positions. Yeah. And you can see that everywhere. And when you want to put a younger person in a leadership position, they're, they're very, you know, uh, Scare, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're skeptical because, they're, oh, yeah. she's too young, you know, can she yeah. manage? But now it is not about experience because you can have 10 years of experience um, or 10 years of working years, True. but only one year of experience. Yeah. So you've actually repeated that one year 10 times, True. you know, so you've never learned anything new in those 10 years. True. And for the younger generation, it could be, or for whoever, it could be that they've worked for one year, but they've learned so much, it True. is worth 10 years so it's quality instead of quantity yeah so it doesn't matter how many years you've worked it's how you actually learn from those years yeah. and so i feel like um i think this is something that they need to address okay. you know they need to make it more common to encourage younger people True. like um in the usa you've got you know why be so young and and you've got in the new zealand and yeah. um, even women leaders you know that's yeah. a stereotype right now yeah. so it's um, time to change everybody it's time yeah to change. i think yeah so anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we'll be right back. So how can we manage a uh, different multi-generational workforce? So first, I would suggest us to identify the preferred management style. So know that every generation has different views on how leadership should be. So get to know your team members uh, and their preferences so that you know how to approach them. So second, I would suggest us to do coaching method. Uh, so this will help employees grow, uh, discuss the strengths and weaknesses, guide them through um, different conversations and also conflicts. Um, when you're giving feedback, don't forget to ask for their feedback on how to make, um, make it better for them to communicate with you. So I hope you learn a lot from this week's episode and hope to see you again on the next topic.